Hello everyone. This video is going to be audio because although I was originally going to show clips from the documentary I'm talking about, I've decided not to because I was unsure if they would fall under fair use or be potential copyright and I didn't want to risk it. So this is more of a listen whilst you do something else video or better still, you can pull up the documentary clip I'm talking about and watch it whilst I'm talking. You can find it by searching BBC Wild China Robrovsky on YouTube and you will see the clips. For those of you who are new, I'm Steph and I've been looking after Robrovsky hamsters for a lot of my adult life and have done a lot of studying about the lives of Robrovsky hamsters in the wild based on research conducted by others. Compared to other animals, I don't think there is very much out there about the lives of Robrovsky hamsters and they certainly don't feature in wildlife documentaries. In fact, to my knowledge, they have only featured in one wildlife documentary, which was the 2008 BBC Wild China series. So I thought it would be worth talking about this. Many years ago when I started caring for Robrovsky hamsters, my mom introduced me to research into better ways to care for them beyond readily available information. She did a lot of online research and showed me various blogs and care information about how to provide the best lives possible for Robrovskis. And this is really how my care journey began. As part of this, we found the BBC Wild China documentary, which features Robrovskis. And I was so excited about about this because as far as I was concerned it was my first insight into Robrovskis in the world. It's a very short clip of only a couple of minutes within an episode and I remember at the time of watching it wondering how they filmed it but because of how it's introduced and because it is an official documentary I really thought that it was trustworthy however I now know it's not. So the clip starts by showing the desert landscape and the moon rising and I think it is likely genuine because the documentary was filmed in China so I assume they did get real footage of the desert whilst there. And then the narrator says the desert isn't entirely lifeless and then we see an adorable Robrovsky hamster peeping out of a hole in which we are led to believe is the desert. And we're then showing clips of Robrovskis running around together in sand among rocks and we hear about their size. We're told they live in family groups of around 10 other research I've read suggests Robrovskis live in pairs, have babies, and once babies grow up, move out to form their own families. We then hear about them storing food and we see them collecting what I think is grain, but obviously let me know if you think it might be something else. Whether it's seed or grain, it is in small piles around the rocks, not next to any plants or near any agricultural land. So when I think about this, it is questionable as to where these piles of food came from. And then for the bit that really confused me, we see the Robrovskis going in and out of burrows and walking up and down tunnels. We also see them digging in the sand. Now I can't help but wondering if this is accurate because we are showing them digging into very soft sand and then suddenly walking down a very well structured tunnel which is larger than their body. I remember wondering at the time of watching this many years ago how they got the cameras into the hamster's burrow without disturbing them or collapsing their tunnel system. I also wondered how the hamster did not mind them being there. Since watching it again and spotting more unconvincing aspects I've done some research about how it was made and I discovered that the Wawrowski hamsters as well as other animals on the documentary were actually filmed in a BBC studio. The Robrovskis were filmed in burrows with glass side panels in a studio set. So it's pretty disappointing because the documentary leads the audience to believe that the Robrovskis are actually in the wild when they're not even wild hamsters. Also, the sets were built by people and this includes the burrowing tunnels themselves. I found a BBC statement about the documentary which included this quote, how do you film subterranean behaviour without being limited to ultra close-up front-on front-lit shots. The answer is to replicate the animal's subterranean tunnel network in a studio setting, inserting strategically sighted glass panels to facilitate filming. I appreciate what they're saying but I don't like the way the documentary misleads and whilst I would not like filming in the wild to disturb any animals, putting animals into an enclosure in a studio is not great especially as Robrovskis in captivity should not be kept together and as far as I can tell there is no information on where they were from, what happened to them afterwards and how long they were in the studio and all of the welfare involved. So I'm yet to find a documentary that actually shows Robrovsky hamsters in the wild. Those are my thoughts on the BBC Wild China Robrovsky clip. I'd love to hear what you think about it all and if you have found any further information on how they made the documentary or if you have come across Robrovskis in any other wildlife documentaries. Thanks for watching or in this case listening and I will see you in the next video.